ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة تركهم على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هذك صلاة ربي وسلامه عليه عباد الله يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد All praises due to Allah who is magnificent in his essence perfect in his attributes undeniable in his presence All praise is due to Allah who has the most magnificent names, a praise that is forever for him, a praise that eternally remains. May he send peace and blessings in their most perfect fashion. May he send greetings and salutations that are complete and everlasting upon the best of his creation. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may he perfect his rank and elevate his station, for he taught us what we did not know. And he gave and he gave and he gave because he loved us so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutun illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah as He deserves to be feared and do not die except in a state of taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and produced from that soul its mate and made from their combination many men and women. So fear your Lord whom you ask each other by and by the ties of kinship verily Allah is ever watchful over you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is correct, He will correct for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, then they are indeed victorious. To proceed briefly inshaAllah ta'ala, in this khutbah, I wanted to speak about the greatest chapter in the Qur'an. And it is a chapter that many of us, if not most of us, if not all of us, who were born into Islam learned as children. And we may not remember when we memorized it and when we learned it. In fact, it is the most oft-repeated chapter in human history. There is no piece of literature, there is no song, there is no hymn, there is no prayer that is spoken more frequently or memorized in more hearts than the greatest chapter in the Qur'an, which is Surah Al-Fatiha. When you open up Surah Al-Fatiha, I want you to pay attention to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim at the beginning of 113 chapters of the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah introduces Himself. Now, Allah introduces Himself using three names. Bismillah in the name of Allah Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Those are the three names. Allah is the one who is worshipped. And it is appropriate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduce Himself to us as the one who is deserving of worship. Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Humanity and the jinn were only created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it is appropriate that He introduces Himself with His greatest name, indicative of His right to be worshipped. The next name is Ar-Rahman. The merciful. And it is also appropriate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces Himself to us as the merciful when the entire message of the Prophet was a mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy encompassed everything. And then the third name, you would think Allah has covered the attributes of worship the attribute of mercy. The third name might be Al-Aziz, for example, the mighty. Or Al-Alim, the knowledgeable. Or Al-Qadir, the able. And yet we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces Himself as Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, the merciful, Ar-Rahim, the merciful. So right from the beginning, when a person is looking at the Qur'an, they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's overwhelming mercy to us. 
A person does not feel distant from the mercy of Allah except for someone who does not know who Allah is in the first place. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And then Allah introduces Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah Rabbul Alameen. What is the Rabb? Ibn Mandur says in Nisan al-Arab, Al-Rabb al -rab yutlaqu fi al-Lugha ala al-Malik wa al-Sayyid wa al-Mudabbir wa al-Murabbi wa al-Qayyim wa al-Munim. The Rabb in the Arabic language has a number of connotations. Number one, Al-Malik the King. Al-Sayyid is the one who is obeyed. Al-Murabbi is the one who develops. Al-Mun'im is the disposer of blessings. Al-Qayyim is the maintainer. Al-Mudabbir is the one who designs. Allah is the Rabb of the worlds. He does that for all of us. And so when you are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the onset of Surah Al-Fatiha, you are saying, Oh Allah, you deserve all praise. You are the Rabb of the worlds. And that could be terrifying. I know some people who, for them to stand in front of any authority, they get so scared, whether it's a manager at work or whether it's a principal at school or whether it's a judge in a courtroom, they can't stand in front of authority. And so a person is standing in front of Rabbul Alameen, that's a terrifying experience even if it's in Salah. So what's the next verse? Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Again, calm down. The one who you're standing in front of is not an oppressive tyrant. The one who you're standing in front of is not going to wrong you in any way. He is, in fact, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Now I want you to pay attention to something. Surah Al-Fatih has only seven verses. Every verse is incredibly valuable real estate. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah already covered the attributes of Him being ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Two verses later, what do we see? Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَبِّئْ عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَا الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tell my believing servants, tell my servants that I am the forgiving and the merciful. And my punishment is the severe punishment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَضْلًا كَبِيرًا Allah says, give glad tidings to the believers that they enjoy from Allah incredible bounty, incredible grace. Again, nobody thinks that they are distant from Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim except for someone who does not know who Ar-Rahman is in the first place. مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the master, the owner of Yawm al -Din. Now interestingly enough, isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the owner of every day? Isn't He the master of every day? So why Yawm al in particular? Isn't Allah the master of today and yesterday and the day before yesterday and tomorrow and the day after that? So why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that He's the master on the day of judgment? Because on the day of judgment, that is the one day where there is going to be no people who claim to own anything. He is going to be undisputed on the day of judgment. There's going to be no Fir'aun who says, أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَحْلَى أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِسْرِ وَهَذِي الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي There's going to be nobody who claims that they are gods other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody will be in submission to Allah. And so Allah mentions that He is مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone do we worship and you alone we seek for help. Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah, he says about this verse that this verse destroys two debilitating social diseases or spiritual diseases. Two debilitating spiritual diseases. What is the first? The first, when you say iyyaka na'bud, you are resolving the problem of riya. The idea of showing off for other than Allah. Why did I come to the masjid today? To be seen by somebody else? Or did I come to be seen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I come to fajr in the morning? Do I come to isha at night? Do I... Do I give da'wah? Do I give charity? Do I, am I good to people because I want an audience of people or is my audience Allah? When you say iyyaka na'bud, you're saying you alone do worship. With my worship, I have no audience other than you. Wa iyyaka nasta'een, and you alone do we seek for help. He says this resolves the disease of kibr, arrogance. And the Prophet Sallallahu says that whoever has an Adam's weight of arrogance will not enter into paradise. And so 17 times a day, every time that you pray, you're saying, You alone do worship. I don't want to have any riya. I don't want anybody to have any share of my devotion to you. But also, I don't want to have any kibbut in my heart. I need you. Even if I feel like I don't need anybody, I need you, Ya Rabbi. I didn't become wealthy by myself. I didn't become successful by myself. 
the richest person on earth, the most successful person on earth, the most competent person on earth, they still have to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have to say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَيْنِ إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us the straight path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say, إِهْدِنَا إِلَى الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ He doesn't say, guide us to the straight path. He says, إِهْدِنَا guide us الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us the straight path. And the connotation here that the Mufassirin mentioned is that you are asking Allah both by that statement. You are asking to be guided to the straight path and you are asking that while you are on the straight path that you don't divert from the straight path. And this is a very humbling statement. There is no person on this earth, no matter how long they've been practicing Islam, no matter how much knowledge they've acquired, no, ma no matter how many good deeds they've done in their life, no matter how long they have been doing it, no matter if their beard has become white in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are still in need every single time that they pray, every single rak'ah, to beg Allah for guidance. And that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to remove that guidance from us, it doesn't matter how many times we've done hajj, it doesn't matter how many surahs of the Qur'an we've memorized, it doesn't matter how many years we've been coming to the masjid, وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ We would not have been guided had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not guided us. And remember one of the most constant du'as of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِ عَلَى دِينِكَ O turner of hearts, make my heart firm upon your religion. Even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is asking Allah. So we never are allowed to feel comfortable that I've been doing this for a long time. You know Ibn Umar in the Mutta of Imam Malik. Ibn Umar is the son of Umar ibn Khattab. He's someone who loved the Prophet ﷺ and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ very much. And yet he said, Oh Allah, as you on the day of Arafah, he stood in Hajj and he said, Oh Allah, like you guided me to Islam. His dua was, Then do not allow me to die except with Islam in my heart. Do not take it away from me until I meet you. Do not take Islam away from me. Not taking our Islam for granted. I'll just finish here because of the time. The path of those you've blessed from before. The martyrs and the righteous and the truthful and the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger. So when you're asking Allah, put me on the path of those who you've blessed from before, you're asking Allah to be on the path of the prophets and the martyrs and the righteous and the truthful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nisa says, and what excellent companions are those? And then you say, not the path of those who earned your anger or those who went astray. And those who went astray or those who earned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger were the people who knew the truth and rejected it. And so anybody who knows the truth willingly and rejects it, they have their share of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger. And anybody, of those who were dhalil, they didn't know the truth and they innovated in their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so anybody who doesn't bother seeking knowledge or asking the people of knowledge and just does whatever they think feels good or is a good idea or what have you in the realm of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they'll have their share of misguidance.